Call the Newport City Council meeting order for Monday, June 18th, 2018, 6.30 p.m. All members of the council are present. Others include Jim Johnson, our clerk treasurer, and Laura <coughs> Dogan, our city manager. The next item is to approve the minutes of June 4th, 2018. I'm going to entertain a motion. Second. Second. Made and seconded. Discussion on the minutes? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Next item is comments by members of the public. I believe we have one person <coughs> signed up. Shane Rogers. Yep. Hi. Uh, so my name is Shane Rogers. Uh, I want to say good evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, the reason I am here tonight is I wanted to implore all the members of the city council to vote against the proposed marijuana ordinance that is on the agenda for today. Oh, can, I, can we wait till we at least have a presentation from the police chief? Um, this is why I asked him to make a public comment. Well, no, but before. it'll be, we'll have public comment before mm -hmm. any vote. And That's so, fine. Yeah. I can give them a That's. I just want to wait because that's an agenda item. Right, Usually public right, comment right. is reserved for items that aren't on the agenda. Great. Okay. I have a, somebody's uh, headlights are on. Uh, the license is B7028. Anybody here? What kind of car? Is it? Little white car. Right out It's clear. <laughs> <laughs> It's right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I recommend the moment. Okay. Moving on. It should be automatic. Well done, Robin. The next item is authorization to receive a USDA Rural Community Development Initiative. We have Mike Welch from NCIC and Karen Garrity from NBDA. Mr. Mayor, Karen and I have been met a few times with Laura to talk a little bit about a uh, USDA initiative, a, a World Community Development Initiative. It's a new grant application that's come up uh, that is due on June 25th. Uh, this is a program that Newport has actually been involved in in the past. The University of Vermont Cooperative Extension has received this grant probably 2012 and it lasted for three years. Um, so back then, that helped to finance a position that worked with the downtown organization. What we're trying, what we're proposing is that NCIC be an applicant on behalf of the city uh, to work with the outcomes from your community visit process. So we've looked at all of the recommendations that have come about as a result of the community visit process. I attended the public meeting that was held last week with the BHB recommendations and it seems to me that Newport is in a really good position to start leveraging some of the funding that's available to move forward with some of these recommendations. What the what this grant would do is it could provide three years of funding to help with staff from NCIC but also provide additional funding for consultants to continue working on the priorities that you've already established. This grant does require a one-to-one -one match. The way we looked at this is that funds that you receive or will receive from the Walmart uh, settlement, the Walmart program, could be used as a match. So you could use about $60,000 per year from that as the match. Uh, and then with that, you'll be able to leverage other funds. And it's not like you would have to commit that funding to anything in particular. The funds are already going to be used on behalf of economic development in the downtown. So whatever funds you, whatever you decide to use for that will still apply toward the match. So we're just utilizing those funds in any way that you've already made decisions or do make decisions on how to use them, <coughs> but we can use that to leverage these other grant funds. So the total grants, 250 over three years, about Eighty-three thousand a year, um, and that's pretty much the summary. I don't know if Laura gave you uh, a kind of a summary of the proposal. Uh, and in addition, 
um, she made a copy of uh, an outline of some of the work that NCIC has done in Wilmington. So Newport, at least from my experience in the last few years, has been uh, ex extremely well served with Karen here and Laura and the work that they've done in terms of getting grants and moving forward with programs. I think this just provides an opportunity to bring another organization to the table that can help support that work that's already going on. Uh, the work that we've done in Littleton by contract gives you an example of some of the types of things that we've been involved in uh, with grants through the EDA, through the USDA, community facilities, through the state environmental programs, USDA water and sewer, the community development block grant program. There are a lot of funding opportunities available uh, that Laura and Karen also know about. But this, I think, can just provide a little more horsepower uh, to help uh, try to make sure that you take it full advantage of all those opportunities that are out there. And then also work with the groups that you've established to move forward on the priorities. So that's kind of the summary. Karen can speak to the grant itself and to um, how it's worked for you toward the past. And I just think it's a good opportunity for the community if it's something of your, your mind to move forward. Yeah, and I can just, I mean, to give an example, as Mike said, it's a one-to-one -one match for the grant, so that means a match of overall $250,000. Um, but, as Mike pointed out, um, so there's Walmart funds, but that would not necessarily be the additional Walmart funds. So for money that the city, for example, has already committed to the downtown organization, both through the allocation through the budget, as well as the 30000 for Walmart, those two pieces at 60000 would count toward a match toward this grant already. Um, so it's not like you're looking at an additional uh, chunk out of the Walmart money. So any money, and for example, any money that you would take to put into a project in the downtown would count toward a match toward this grant. So it's not additional money per se just for the grant. It's money that you're using to invest, say, in a project in downtown that can be used against the grant. Um, so it, it shows, the RCDI requires that you show a one-to-one -one match, but it actually, it, it really leverage a lot to get a lot. It, you don't leverage as much as what you get in return. So um, I came into the community on an RCDI grant to provide technical support um, to three organizations around the kingdom, and I can highly support the type of capacity that this grant will provide to move projects forward. So to have the NCIC expertise around various things, you know, financing options, uh, marketing options, investment options, and so forth, will really take us to the next level with the team that you've already built, um, will just give us that additional, as Michael was to say, the additional horsepower to move projects forward in a coordinated fashion. So I, I think the grant, it's a great opportunity to apply for the grant, and I know I can envision a little of the hesitation around the match, so that, you know, the concern is coming against the taxpayer, but you've already, for example, this year, put in 60000 to the downtown organization. That would be considered part of the match. Um, so those are the investments that you're already making that can be counted. I think one other comment that I'd like to make, and it is in the brochure that you received, is that um, we do, NCIC does a lot of other things. So aside from community development type projects, our president, John Freeman, has been involved in several of the new market tax credit projects that have gone on. I know that Newport has considered some of those up here. When you look at some of the potential development, that's certainly a funding source that's, that's going to need to be considered. This new opportunity zone is something that uh, John uh, is going to be well schooled on in terms of how to take advantage of that. Uh, so John brings a lot of financial expertise to the table in terms of helping to get projects like this. Kathy Conway, who is my boss, who is not able to be here tonight because she's had some surgery, uh, is a professional engineer. Uh, so she's got a lot of experience with getting projects off the ground and getting the finance. We have a, a grant writer, uh, Caitlin Robinson, who is a uh, graduate of UVM and came to us as an intern and has just done a phenomenal job helping to support community development programs for NCIC. So I think we bring a lot of expertise to add to the expertise already have here uh, and it's a good opportunity for both organizations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
think it would be a good opportunity for the city of New York. And um, that's why I, I asked them to be on the agenda, because we are at a, I like to say we're on the precipice of change. And I think this will help um, move some of the concepts into actual implementation. And we're at a very exciting time. Um, when the EB-5 news was announced in April of 2016, we were the two organizations that have walked in concert with the city on all of our grants that we applied for. And it seems like a very fitting way to resource your services to help us at this critical time. So I'm hopeful that um, if there's any questions you have, now's the time to ask them. You said that there's an actual proposal that we don't have in our package. It's, an, it's a scope. No, I, I don't have one because there is a lot of red line on that. So, I mean, basically, we took the goals or the application from the recommendations in the green or step. Um, so the primary goals are to encourage and lead a viable construction project for the Main Street property, uh, develop Four Seasons outdoor recreation economy, which is something we've been talking about here for a long time, build the capacity of the Newport Downtown Organization. So you've already started to do that through your support of the Executive Director, but continue to have organizational support behind that organization, support and attract businesses and entrepreneurs. So that, those are the goals of the project. Uh, and the funding will be used to support staff from NCIC and then also consultants to help achieve those objectives. So out of that $83,000 coming from the grant, about 33000 of that is for consulting services. So when you talk about things like your White and Burke contract, which I think has been beneficial and will probably lead to even more opportunity here in Newport, this may be a way to continue that without having to put uh, more city dollars into it. Your funding is leveraging that USDA money that can help pay for that service. And it could be for, for marketing, when you look at the website, uh, look at developing a marketing plan, look at reinstituting those uh, platforms that have been, been developed um, through the downtown organization for marketing platforms. So there would be dollars available to help with marketing. Can you promise there will be no more feasibility studies and only implementation? <laughs> that, I don't know as I promised that because there, there may be some things you may want to do feasibility studies on and you would have some money for that. Our goal is just like you see in that brochure in Littleton, that's construction. That's what we specialize in, that's what we like to see. You've got a lot of construction projects already in the works here as a result of all that planning that has gone on already. So it's good that you've built on that. And now we're taking these planning documents to the next step and let's implement some. And we'd like to be, help you part of that. And just to, just to follow up on the feasibility, I, I, I get the, the hesitancy about doing more feasibility studies because it seems as though they're done to sort of get results maybe that we already know. But when you go out to shop for developers, you need the most current information about whatever project you're talking about. And that's where the feasibility studies feed in to um, really helping us be able to garner development. So um, so having that studied and in writing and current is, is what's really important. And current can sometimes be mean, you know, the last two years. So a lot changes pretty quickly in the development world. And uh, you know, even things like what's happening with our situation with tariffs. Um, looking as we talked the last time about the, uh, the boardwalk, we can't get quotes more than 10 days out for any of the steel because of the issue with the tariffs. So things like that that impact construction costs, um, sometimes you need to go back and revisit. So, so we'll promise to keep those at a minimum, but there will be things I think that you want to see more research done on. Other questions from council members? Then we would need a motion to, is it this, this assurance agreement? That's the assurance, and that allows you to receive the funds. <coughs> so I would entertain a motion if the council so chooses to uh, authorize me to sign the assurance agreement regarding the grant. So moved. The motion's been made, is there a second? 
Second. Second. Discussion? Yes. I'd really like to know, I mean, it, it probably is a good thing that we're, that this would happen, but I'd really like to know how much of this money is going to be spent paying uh, NCIC um, salaries, consultant salaries, or, or fees, uh, and how much we can actually spend on, you know, like a shovel lifting some soil to build something, the actual project, as opposed, we've got eight studies sitting on shelves uh, telling us what we could do, but, but we have very little money, it seems, for doing it. Yeah, that's a good question. The, um, so again, the money from Walmart isn't going to pay NCIC salaries. That's going to whatever the city council makes, decides to use that, that funding. That was going that way anyway. But now we can leverage this other money with that. So before you would have just spent it and it's gone, now we can <coughs> leverage additional funding. And it's, it, it, it sounds uh, negative to say consultants, but it's not. I mean, if you look at, when I say consultants, that's why I mentioned marketing. I'm talking about being able to market the community, being able to keep your website completely up to date, being able to buy advertising if you have to buy advertising, being able to move forward again with this White and Burke contract. I mean, I think that bringing those, that development team in is a good thing. That's not that's, those are consulting dollars. And so this grant would have about $33,000 a year available for that type of investment. And it's not just throwing money to a consultant, it's moving projects forward. In terms of NCIC staff, out of the grant is about $50,000 a year. But again, that's not just paying NCIC staff to sit in an office in St. Johnsbury. That's bringing a team of professionals here that can work with the team that you already have to advance more projects, get more grants, and get more work done. That's that's what we do. And that's what we'd love to be a part of here. Um, I had a, I don't, can't see what exactly the scope of it is, but I was wondering you're talking about new stuff, but what about supporting what already exists? For example, Phil White brings hundreds, hundreds of people here with all of his outdoor activities, yeah. and um, and I don't see a lot of cooperation with here with him, and and yet I know that what he's he's bring, bringing a lot of dollars to the city with what he does. Yeah. And then also, I mean, and I as a business don't ever seem to be acknowledged. In fact every planning thing that I've seen has been stuff to hurt my business. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, what is all this planning going to do? Is it going to help me as a business person or is it going to damage me? I mean, I think that the Newport City Motel uh, representative at the Burke and White presentation made that point of why would you want to bring a hotel and hurt his business when he's, you know, why not support him? He's already here and, and doing business. So I don't know what, what your report says. I don't know if it talks about supporting existing businesses or not, but right. I certainly would like to see that. Yeah. It's not our report. What we're using is your report and following the recommendations that have come from the people of Newport, which is what this represents to a certain extent. I mean, obviously, it's not everybody, but this was quite a process with a lot of people involved in it. And these are the recommendations that we're going to be trying to find. Those and whatever the council sets as a priority from this VHP study that just barely came out. There's a very long list of capital projects. The council and the mayor, I assume, will set some priorities on those. We'll be able to help advance those priorities. So those are two studies that Newport has participated in. We're not proposing creating another study, another report. We're asking to help move forward with these recommendations. And that VHB study was based on community input as well. So that was, you know, as you'll recall, the tour that was done and the meetings that were done, um, those were community input studies as well. And it really does support a lot of the recommendations that are included here. So it all dovetails. And in terms of the importance of having stuff like this, and I know from being a city manager myself, you always hear about planning, planning, and never doing it. When you have these current studies and current plans that you can fall back on, that helps you when you go to apply for funding. 
It really does. It's a huge difference if you have a plan and a community has established priorities, and then you can help you can get funding to move some stuff forward. Any other questions? Then, are, um, are those in favor of the motion? Say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Thank you very much. Do you want to take this back with you? I will. Mike? If I can, that'd be great. Um, I think it needs a seal. Mr. Johnson. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. So I can either mail it to you because your seal is yeah. probably downstairs. It's fine. Okay. No All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mike and Karen. You want to take it with him on the phone too? Oh. I guess you want to. Concern. I didn't mind the first time, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure we have other non-union employees in the, in the city, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's uh, 
really acceptable to be giving your people seven and a half percent and not giving these other people money too. Sure. So I, I'm not sure how, how that's working out. I think this is addressing the uh, part-time non-union yes. people only, Seth? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so the issue back in April was retention. Yeah. And uh, he had originally proposed giving a dollar increase. We felt that was too much in one shot. And uh, he was asked at that time to come back just in advance of the new fiscal year so that uh, we didn't want to hit the um, payment too severely. But Seth's issue is retention. It's also how it impacts his full-time budget. So he's looking at the bottom line. Is, is that right, Seth? You should probably. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Can I borrow that? I just yeah. can't find it in my packet. Um, yeah, so essentially everything the city manager said is correct. Um, I think while you're looking at the overall number, which is a reasonable thing to do at 7.5%, I think you need to look at the pay rates that they're currently being paid. And these people, specifically my part-time personnel, who are working nights, weekends, holidays, sometimes coming in on less than an hour's notice to say so-and-so just called out sick for their shift and I need you to work 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. tomorrow. Um, a lot of them cannot sustain full, uh, employment um, with just Newport PD as a part-time person because they just don't, there's no guarantee of hours. So to be able to try to make a run um, as this is your primary means of income um, without a set schedule of hours, I mean, how do you create a budget on that? There's, there's no way to do so. So really what I'm looking to do overall, this is a, I recognize this will be a very long-term uh, process, but in taking off chunks at a time, is getting a pay, range, a pay rate to a point where someone might be able to say, I could work part-time at one job and part-time at another. But specifically for part-time uh, for part-time police officers, the amount of training that's required. They would, most people that have say four weeks of vacation a year from their regular full-time job would have to spend their entire vacation for the entire year just to get halfway through their training to become a police officer. Where are you going to come up with the other? Now you're going to take your other job non-paid. So, um, you know, a dispatcher starting salary going from thirteen fifty to fourteen dollars an hour. I think pick and shovels paying 13 something an hour to start there. So it's very difficult to recruit uh, high quality people that can retain this this kind of knowledge base. I just needed that for the numbers. Thank you. Okay. Other questions from council members on this? Just a comment. Um, if your budget can, can handle it, then I'm certainly in favor of trying to bring people up to almost a livable wage. Yeah. and. Um, unlike Mr. Ross, I think that if some employees can get closer to that, then great, and hopefully the rest can follow suit at some time. But I don't think we should artificially hold down salaries for equity. I'm just looking at it as a part-time job, and not necessarily a living wage, because if you're getting 10 hours some weeks and 20 the next, you're not relying on that to live. You know. Now, if it's a young person that's interested in becoming a police officer, you want to make sure you're paying him enough so that he's interested in the job and can be. Sure. And that proposal, sorry, it's okay. <laughs> that proposal would be $17 an hour and then $18 an hour after um, two years of full-time full, full -time employment with this agency as a part-time officer. In other words, not working for another law enforcement agency. A little bit of time. Other questions, Mr. Schneck, and this would go to the July uh, first. Requesting July first for the 2018-19 fiscal year. Other questions from any council members? Then I guess I would entertain a motion um, to approve the request. If you so choose. I'll make that motion. With the fair rates. A motion to be made. Is there a second? I'll second. Made and seconded. Any more discussion on it? Then hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Um, Mr. Mayor, I have just a question. That's, I should know this, but I didn't have time to check. Was this uh, description on the webs attached to the agenda on the website today? I I'm getting a yes. From well, you can have mine if you want. That's fine. I just no. want to, I, I wasn't, yeah. didn't have, have time to have a look. See, nope, that's thank okay. you very much. <laughs>
There's an extra one there. An extra one. Well, not a gen, she wanted a copy of the oh, the no. wages, the wage, the wage, yeah, proposed wage schedule. Yeah, I didn't have time to look for it. Okay, the next item is marijuana ordinance, and uh, Chief Sasanto has a uh, presentation to discuss. Yeah, so real quickly, um, I don't, I, I have no intention of getting into the discussion of is marijuana legalization good or bad, legislatures made that decision. Um, what I am proposing here is an ordinance banning the sale of recreational marijuana in the city of Newport. Um, the draft that I provided to you has been checked over by the city attorney and um, I would, I guess, first advise the council that um, if this is enacted, it can be removed at any time. It's not set in stone concrete forever. Um, However, there is so much that, so much time and resources at the city of Newport, um, the police department, the health department, the um, risk team, the prevention, intervention, treatment and recovery community in this area are doing to try to negate drug problems um, or substance abuse issues or mental health issues or what have you. And unfortunately, I thought uh, Speaker Johnson's uh, inaugural address was very uplifting in the sense that what she said was, your legis talking to the community, your legislators are going to focus on the matters, the issues that matter to Vermonters. Well, one of the very first legislative options that the Senate took up was the legalization of marijuana. Now, what this ordinance proposes to do is ban the recreational sale marijuana. Um, while it is and will be after July 1st still illegal to sell or distribute marijuana, um, there are certain things that the July 1 law allows, and that is possession of marijuana. This ordinance does not talk about possession of marijuana. Um, it also talks about uh, the legal ability to grow marijuana, either in your side of your house or outside your house. Uh, this ordinance does not in any way discuss that. This is simply for the commercialization, commercial sale of. Um, and again, while there is a clear-cut definitive criminal statute in place that would allow the police department to arrest for that, moving on down the line, it is my belief that the legislature will continue to push for a uh, regulated market for marijuana. Now I can tell you that if the city of Newport were to ban the sale of alcohol, even for a specified time during the day, your police department would have a lot more time available to things like community policing than it would combating drug issues. I see zero benefit to the city of Newport and or its residents to legalize the sale of a substance that is federally illicit and potentially put federal grant dollars at risk, not knowing what's going to happen down the line. Um, so this has been drafted. You can speak further or answer questions if you have any. Um, pretty self-explanatory on the ordinance itself. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about that. Council members? Questions on this? I, I talked to the chief about this. And it's a, an important issue. The final decisions won't be for the first part of next year. You know, there's no legal retail sale now in the state of Vermont. But in Maine, Massachusetts, they're finding, finding ways around it. They're making it a gift and charging for the bag that it comes in. So they're doing other things. They're giving the marijuana away but charging for another service. So, so you know, they're always fighting to get around it. And, and I agree, you know, and I'm hoping that the state will look at it that way and come out with a statute that allows us not to do this. And our discussion was revolved around zoning. And zoning isn't one of those places where because you don't like something, you can ban it. You know, if something's legal, you just can't say you can't do that in your zoning. There's been tons and tons of lawsuits that have been gone against stuff like that. The biggest one in this state was trailers. Uh, towns would ban trailers on lots because they didn't like you know, the standards. So the concept that this is great, 
you know, if you have a discussion, it's like putting the cart before the horse because really it doesn't exist yet. I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. There's a bill, what is it, H-490, where they already tried to push through something that towns can enact ordinances just like this. So unless the towns address the issue before it's legalized, we'll be on the ball. We can't do anything. That's essentially, well said, sir, that's essentially this in a nutshell. This is the city of Newport's mm -hmm. opportunity to get out in front of an issue instead of play catch up later on. And as I said before, you know, if there's a, a legal challenge or a new legislative law that comes out or something unforeseen from the legislature that we're not aware of at this point in time today, we can deal with it at that time. But to set ourselves up to try to play catch up later on is a bad precedent, but B um, is kind of against really what this community collectively is saying together. Like I talked about the Peter process, the risk team, all of the meetings that the police department hosts um, in an attempt to utilize as many community resources as we can to combat substance abuse issues. You know, again, I, I'm not here to to down talk the legislature, but it was just really concerning and disappointing to see that that was the road they choose to, chose to go down. Um, now, we're not the first community to do this. No. From my research, there was at least two others that have already done this. That is correct. And I know my thing is, it's not so much, I really truly think it's a federal issue. They need to solve it in Washington once and for all. I know this talk, I know I'm going to make it up low track, but this talk of hemp now how it's real, a viable crop, to, you know, and that's actually loosening up maybe in Washington, but that won't be illegal. That's you know? the first and that's, step towards. Right, and that's the way I look at it, is it really truly is a, is a federal issue. And as far as um, this here, my concern is it's still illegal in the eyes of the federal government, and I'd be afraid of putting any grant monies that we might be eligible for at risk. That's, that was one of my concerns also with this. Well, it sends a message to the legislature. And the more communities that do it, maybe they'll take a, a different different look at it. But the hemp oil and stuff, we're selling locally now. Right, right. right. What I'm saying is the federal government's starting to loosen up on that. Because this really, to me, is a federal issue. It's more of a federal than really a state issue. They can solve it one way or the other. But I know in the eyes of the feds, yeah, they still they still really frown upon what the states are doing right now. Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. um, as somebody who works in substance abuse prevention, I, um, I'm certainly in favor of the ordinance. I am a little upset at how it's being rolled out. The council was only given the ordinance to review this past Friday, and here it is on the agenda on Monday for a vote. I strongly prefer to get something, at least a meeting in advance, where the public has a chance to talk about it and comment on it, rather than just blow it through without any time for public input. And I don't, I don't know who's responsible for that. But. This is following the ordinance process, so there's no blowing it through. I mean, we're, we're initiating the process. So you have a right to vote on it tonight or not. You, know, you can take it under advisement. You can do whatever it is you see fit. But in terms of presenting an ordinance, we haven't done anything different tonight. So, I don't know. A draft is supposed to be a draft where there's opportunity to amend it. And that is, that's the council's prerogative. So what we've done is present to you a draft. This draft with this particular language has been vetted by the city attorney. So that you have the flexibility if you decide to approve it tonight. Um, there is um, a process that it goes through before it's officially approved, and it's a 60-day it's a wait. So it goes through a period of, um, let's see, it does not become effective for 60 days. It gets published within 14 days of the date of adoption, and it contains a right to file a petition um, within 44 days of the, of the ordinance's adoption. So um, what we're doing is following the process. There's there's nothing different. I understand that, that. I would prefer to give the public more opportunity to comment. That's all. That's your prerogative. I mean, we're we're getting the process started.
just a second. Normally, I entertain a motion, then I open it up for discussion. And so, at this time, I'm going to entertain a motion on the proposed ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we accept ordinance number 118, dealing with the sale and distribution of marijuana within the city limits of New York. A motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Made and seconded. Now I'm going to open it for discussion. Hello. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shane Rogers. Um, I have a, a question first and foremost and then a statement. So my question is, in the ordinance, it does specifically say the distribution of marijuana. And I was hoping to have that clarified if that did actually mean uh, people who were growing two plants or what have you and had marijuana on them once it was legal would therefore be banned from giving their friend marijuana uh, within the legal limit. You know the state law more than I do. Pursuant to state law, you won't be allowed to do that. Pursuant to state law. Correct. Okay. Um, and with that being said, I am here tonight to really implore the city council and the city to vote no on this ordinance. I think it's uh, relatively foolhardy for the city to preemptively ban what is going to be a legalized substance and what would essentially, what could essentially become a very lucrative, lucrative stream of revenue for the city. Uh, I hear time in and time out of how we are working to attract businesses here and as much as you may not want to embrace it, um, outdoor recreation and marijuana do go hand in hand. Um, they are uh, two industries that have flourished in other states who have legalized the sale of marijuana. And I think it would be a shame for the city to, like I said, preemptively ban a substance rather than take the time to study how to potentially make a safe environment for businesses to flourish which will not only attract more visitors to the city, as we have been trying to do for years, um, but also provide a relatively large stream of tax revenue, which, as we talk about money time in and time out again, that's something that I think we can all agree on. Thank you. Yeah, you can ask a question, but as far as tax revenue, we won't see any, if they tax marijuana, we don't get any of that revenue. That's um, a state your, tax. So the, the, the comment that I am talking about is the actual implementation of the business in the city will lead to more revenue generated within the city. So yes, if they tax marijuana directly on that sale of marijuana, and that goes to a certain fund, but if a business is here to fill in, say, where the Radio Shack was or where the yard store was, that is tax revenue that is going to be coming into, or where your or house was. House. But that's tax revenue that could be coming into the city. And I think it would be a shame for this city of Newport to, once again, preemptively ban what is going to be a legalized substance, the sale of a legalized substance, in two weeks. We are not only putting the cart before the horse, but we took the wheels off <laughs> and we're blocking the road for what can be a potentially very lucrative and audience. It's not legal to sell in two weeks. He, he, I never said it was legal to sell in two weeks. No, no, legalized substance. Oh, legalized substance. It is going to be a legalized substance in two weeks and to preemptively ban the substance from what potentially could be the sale of it. Legalized I, in the state of Vermont, but not in the eyes of the federal government. And that's what I'm concerned about. Right, but CBD and hemp is also illegal in the eyes of the federal government, but I'm pretty sure I can go find CBD oil somewhere around here and that's for sale. So that argument in and of itself, I just don't hold much merit. And unless you want to go ahead and ban CBD oil um, or CBD products, um, then I think that could hold some weight. But, did the chief have a follow-up question? Yeah, I, I just I have two questions. Are you here representing yourself or any entity? I'm representing myself as a resident of Newport, as someone who resident of Newport and who lives right on the state, like the line of Newport Town, Newport City, and functions in this city time and time again, who is heavily involved in what is going on in the city, and as a young person <laughs> in general. Okay. Um, so you are a city resident? Um, I am technically on the town line of Newport Town, Newport City, like where a one to five is. Okay. There's no line. You're either in the city or you're not. I, I, I just, I just said I'm, I'm technically right, right on the other side of the line of the Newport Town, Newport City, and as someone who functions here. Lines drawn on the face of the earth. 
<laughs> Just a second. I want only one person at a time. And I'm not. And I just want to one more follow up. I'm not here to be. I'm not here to be combative. I'm here to just. I'm here to in, in, to portray an opinion that I, I feel like has, has been lost um, or hasn't been said so far. Pam and Diane and Pam. So Pam. Yeah. I'm glad you raised the issue of CBD oil. If you look at Section 2.A, it talks about marijuana products. CBD oil and other com compounds that are similar are currently sold all over Newport. They're sold at the farmer's market, they're sold at Pick and Shovel, they're sold at Newport Natural, and umpteen other stores. If this ordinance goes through as you've written it, you have screwed those businesses. And I bet if you ask for a show of hands in this room, there are many people in this room who use those products very effectively. They're topical. Some of them are oral. They have some of the components of marijuana removed from them. But they're very effective. They're being prescribed. And people go in to see their doctors. They have an injury. They are encouraged to use it. I don't think you're clear about what you're asking for with this. And I'm also really concerned that those of us riffraff in the public only got to even look at this ordinance this afternoon because it wasn't included. We understood that we couldn't see anything until, quote, 9 o'clock this morning, but it wasn't included in the package. I had to email all of you and say, okay, why are we not being given access to this? And then miraculously it appeared. I don't think that was an oversight. I think that was deliberate. You all got a copy of that email. That's that is of concern to me. This is an issue that should be being discussed, regardless of what anybody thinks about marijuana or not. But I will bet there are several people in this room who are fully aware of what CBD oil is and are using it. Just a second. No, I think uh, we're confusing two different things because those products are made from hemp, not marijuana. Oh. So, not exactly. you know, there's a fine. If you look at the description of CBD oil, it lists it as marijuana. And it's a real fine line. You've got to be clear about what it is that you're banning and not banning. I'm requesting to ban marijuana, which has the same meaning as provided in Title 18 BSA Section 4201, Subsection 15, which does not include what Mr. Ross is talking about, things, CBD oil extracts mm -hmm. from hemp, et cetera, et cetera. The problem with writing what, what she's referring to, and it would be nice and easy to do it this way, is banning the sale of THC. Mm -hmm. But there are so many different things that contain THC. You know, does the state choose to legalize edibles? And the list goes on and on and on. For just the amendments for the bill, it was 117 pages long <laughs> for the amendments. So, again, I really truly do. Re I'm sorry for your first name, Sam. Shane. Sh 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 sorry, Shane. I think he brings up a good point in the sense that he's young, he's engaged, and he wants to know what's going on in this community. To that, I agree 100%. Um, I guess I would say this, and I, I don't, for the audience, I don't mean to sound, um, but I'll just say this the, the, most, the best way I can say it possible. If the city of Newport chooses to follow federal law and ban the sale of a federally illicit substance, that doesn't prohibit Derby from allowing to sell commercialized marijuana or Newport Town or Coventry. This community, our community in Newport City, is focused on solving the drug problem. This ordinance moves us closer to helping us put tools in our toolbox that can keep drugs out of hands of people that don't we don't want to have drugs. That's the whole purpose behind this ordinance, is public safety. It's not about do I think it's right or do I think it's wrong or my personal opinion. I am telling you that our community will be safer if we do not sell commercialized marijuana. I hope that, I'm not, I, again, I'm not trying to talk down to anyone, I'm just trying to convey the purpose for drafting this. That's what I'm trying to do. I, it's my feeling that, that whether legal or not, the, the buying and selling of marijuana will continue in Newport just as it always has. That's not going to stop. And the effect of keeping, making something 
uh, continuing to have it be illegal is that it simply makes more work for the police department who are now tied up with arresting and incarcerating people and getting them involved in the criminal justice system for a relatively small, benign issue in the drug world, probably more benign than alcohol. And in, instead, the idea of making these relatively small and benign uh, issues legal is so that we can get people out of that treadmill, run around, get involved in the legal justice system so that their lives are not further damaged so that they end up in a much bigger issue, which is the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. We don't want to confuse the two things. Marijuana is not an opioid, and we need to realize that by legalizing these local or these more benign uh, drugs that we're actually um, helping people's lives improve so that we can help them not be involved in other things. And we'll take work off of your shoulders because you won't be running around after people buying and selling marijuana, which they're going to continue to do. They've been doing it for the last 40 years. Which so I, I it's not going to stop. Four centuries. I appreciate that comment. Prohibition didn't stop people drinking alcohol. I appreciate that comment. Um, and I've heard that same uh, modus operandi from legislature. I can't begin to tell you how little time currently we're spending on marijuana investigations because the opioid problem is so far out of control in this city. And uh, all of the drug dealers and or drug addicts, and they number, I'm closing in on nearly a thousand interviews in a 16 year career. I have not once, zero times ever heard a drug addict either currently suffering or recovering that has told me that the first drug that they ever tried was anything other than marijuana to include they prescription pills. <laughs> All of them. And smoke cigarettes. And okay, okay, wait a minute. Okay. Um, did you have, was Ruth and Ann? Mm -hmm. uh, right, it was Ruth and then, no, yeah. Mr. But just a second. She, Miss, um, Miss Sprouse next. <laughs> I couldn't think of Ruth Sprouse. And then Ann's next, and then we'll go to you after. I don't have a. I don't have anything to talk about the substance of the ordinance. What I am really confused by is the process. Um, on the planning, I'm on the planning commission, and we heard something about a marijuana ordinance. What was it like a year ago? And and the chairman of the planning commission said, you know, get us something in writing, and we'll begin to discuss it. Well. I know that you have the right as council to do ordinances, but what's the point of the planning commission if we're not, so I thought that we were supposed to work on the bylaw and create ordinance for the bylaw. I, I don't get why the planning commission has basically been frozen out. It's not that the planning commission's been frozen out, it's that you don't have the authority to write a bylaw banning the sale of commercial sale of marijuana. You don't have the authority to do we that. We did it before with the other ordinance medical, on marijuana. Medical marijuana. Medical marijuana, right. which is separate in the state's eyes, mm -hmm. and they specifically wrote in a statute that said you can ban this using a zoning bylaw if you so choose. But they have done no such so thing. So this is it. not going to be in the zoning bylaw? No, it's not a zoning bylaw, it's an ordinance. Okay, They're so two, it's totally two separate, separate, two separate um, things, right? Okay, so this, the planning commission does not write ordinances. Is that not part of their duty? No, they write zoning bylaw. Right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Zoning. Okay. Well, but if you're not going to sell it, then that would have to be part of the zoning bylaw, wouldn't it? That you like you couldn't have a place to sell it. Okay, so that's what my confusion is about. Did that answer? Right. Okay. So, so the previous one, the state allowed towns to buy out of having a medical dispensary. And our bylaw was written based on that state statute. All right. They haven't they don't have any state statutes that address retail sales yet. So we wouldn't have anything to base a bylaw on. Which is well said. So if the legislature later on chooses to do the same thing with uh, zoning bylaws on commercialization commercialized sale of marijuana, then it very well could be an ordinance and a zoning bylaw. So in fact, if you had an ordinance, then you could, would the zoning bylaw have to agree with the ordinance, or could it be different? In theory. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, zoning addresses what you do in a building, what you do with property. Right. And planning. What about planning? Uh, wouldn't this 
fall under planning? It would if you wanted to have a section on marijuana. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I wanted a section, yeah. But we can do that. <laughs> and then, and so, and then uh, the second question about process is, um, I know that when we create, uh, when we make changes to the zoning bylaw, we have to have a public hearing, and then, you know, there's a wait, and then public hearing. There's going to be no public hearing process on this. We are following the public hearing process. We warned it. We're speaking about it in public tonight. And then, have, as the city manager read, you have 60 days to write it. I'm sorry, before I start saying the numbers wrong. Yep. It has 60 days to go into effect and a 14-day period to file um, appeal. Thank you. So I, I realize I heard that, but okay. I but I usually there's a, actually an actual meeting which is warned specifically right. for a change that so can for a zoning bylaw change. That's not the way it works. So ordinances can just be implemented like this without any public process, basically. This is the public process for ordinance. which isn't really adequate, but I mean, it's for an issue that a lot of people have opinions about. Sure. This is following 24 VSA section. I, I'm not doubting that you're following. I'm talking about procedure and, and you know, trying to be transparent to the public um, in general, um, rather than just sort of, it, it appears to have sort of been sneaked in, you know, at the last minute. I know you probably did everything legally, but it takes a while for people to find out what's going on. You sure. Know? And they, they Which is know, unfortunate. They find it out takes people that long to find out because perhaps if more people had gone to the legislature and said, we don't want this in our state, we have enough problems to deal with, that we might not even be having this conversation. But that discussion went on all during the whole session. I mean, it, it sure for did. a couple of years, so people mm -hmm. had plenty of time to comment. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, you know, I, I don't think that. Um, this discussion and this ordinance should center on people's personal opinion uh, about um, marijuana and whether or not it should be legal or not. I mean, the state and in any number of other states uh, in the United States have decided uh, to make marijuana legal to a small extent for personal use. And there's a well-crafted statute that I looked at, the Vermont statute, that says it's illegal to sell marijuana. Um, and it is very careful and it, it, it specifically enumerates what is marijuana and it specifically says what is not marijuana and it includes the hemp products, um, etc. and so maybe seven or eight other things. So you've already got a well-crafted statute. And I think it's also, yeah, not nice to sort of say that we're the uh, we're the good people who want to ban uh, marijuana from Newport, uh, but the rest of the state, you know, they just must be evil and, and want uh, they don't want drug programs, they don't want anything. They've got drug programs everywhere else, uh, and they're very interested in controlling drugs. But in its wisdom, the state thought that we, like many other states, where alcohol is legal, they thought a minimum amount of marijuana would be legal too, and it wouldn't cause any more harm than all the people that are driving um, drunk. Um, and so, and, and the other thing I would uh, sort of take um, uh, a differ with is that it's not just a young person's thing. Um, it's, it's an old person's thing too, um, marijuana has proven to be really useful for people who, who are ill. Uh, sometimes they can't, they have to, now they can't buy uh, marijuana, medical marijuana in the city. To find a dispensary, they sometimes have to go uh, two hours, three hours away to get a, a dispensary. People with MS, uh, cancer, um, pardon, glaucoma, um, all sorts of things. You know, may, maybe they wind up because they don't have the money to go somewhere else buying some illegally uh, right now. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, marijuana was made illegal. Um, and I, as since there's already a well-crafted state statute that's been tried and true for a long time about not selling marijuana, um, I don't think you need to create this ordinance, which is just redundant and not as well worded as the state statute is. 
So go ahead. Yeah, and I don't know if I'm supposed to respond. Yeah, I'll let you respond, and then after that, we'll go to Mr. Farrow and Robin, and then call them. So to that, I would just say this. This is not banning anyone from possessing mm -hmm. marijuana. This is simply to commercialize the sale of. Um, I don't find it easy to talk about this stuff because I don't feel well. I don't feel well because I haven't gotten very good medical care from the system I live in. I think we're living in a society that's top heavy with rules. Stuff gets crammed through. The real harm that's being done is being done to people. It's not to drugs that are harming people so much. Drugs do harm people, I'm sure, but most of the harm getting done is people harming other people. And I see a lot of poor people around me suffering because of a lot of dumbass rules. I feel like I'm living in an Orwellian nightmare. Even the Bible says we've been given even every, every green herb bearing seed to be used as medicine. I think it's gone beyond the pale. It's people that are being abused, not drugs. Now I could go on, but I'm not going to, because I could... I just think it's getting ridiculous. Uh, Robin, and then we have Colin. Uh, just to understand, is this um, like a traffic ordinance? How would you... To civil ordinance. So you would police it with a ticket rather than it's not a crime in the sense of how would it be You're handled? So, so how would it work? The civil ordinance you receive a ticket. A ticket for selling it. And like, do you how do you figure how often would you hand that out? How many people do you run into who? No idea. It's, that's that's the problem with creating an ordinance to fend off something that we see is going to be a problem down the road. Is that it's not here yet. So how many tickets a year am I going to write for this? I don't know. How many places are going to sell? I don't know. Hopefully not in the city of Newport, and then I'll have a lot of spare time on my hands to enforce other things. Yeah. Colleen, um, I wanted to ask who wrote the ordinance. I did. Alone? Yes. Okay. That's it. And then I go to Dan, and then Ann and Pam, and then... How much money was spent um, getting the lawyer to look at it and approve it? I have no idea. Well, somebody should know. We don't have the bill yet. How many hours was spent by him? Or her. You, you don't get estimates before you contract with somebody? No, we have an attorney on retainer. But this is like I'm going to be out of business. <laughs> I, always I get appreciate your comment. <laughs> you know, it's just business. Did you? And yeah. then Diane. Anne addressed earlier about being nice. Questioning Shane on where he lives was not appropriate. I once asked somebody who was being critical, did they live in Newport? And you were all over me, and it became part of another meeting after that. And yet, when it was raised by those of you sitting up there tonight, it was apparently perfectly okay to attack Shane for not actually living in Newport. You don't live in Newport, Seth, is that right? Nor does Laura. What does that have to do with any of it? That was not appropriate. For the record, Shane, I hope you don't think that I was attacking you in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I appreciated your comments as someone coming out from, no offense, the so, young community. I agree. To, to give me. We're not saying millennial. For <laughs> 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 the millennial community. Except you were not the one who went after him. So, just. You, you so excuse me, me, excuse me. Okay. Just a second, okay? Are you, I, yeah, are you I, finished? I, I think I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to have this back and forth, you know. Um, you, go ahead. Just, yeah, and just to clarify, Pam, I appreciate the support. I appreciate the support. And just for the record, I live in Newport Town. I 
worked in Newport for the past two years and just recently left, and I spend a lot of time and money in the city of Newport, and I just want to clarify that is why I am making these comments here. You also head up one of our meetings. Great Newport committees, but I have by no means in representing right. No, no, but you, you're showing the interest in Newport. <laughs> right. No, what I'm getting at is you're showing the interest in Newport by chairing one of the committees that, as a result of that, yeah. that visit. That's what I was... We're going to go um, to Diane, and then that's going to stop the discussion after that. So I presume when you're talking about people buying and selling marijuana, you're not talking about someone opening a store on Main Street because since it's illegal, who in the heck would do that, right? So what you're talking about is what's been going on since who knows how long, the last 40 or 50 years, is that people are buying and selling marijuana in their homes or on the street, maybe somewhere. So. Those people who are my neighbors, most of them are very poor, and I want to point out that uh, even something like a traffic ticket in the beginning of a downward spiral, even the equivalent of a traffic ticket is the beginning of a downward spiral, they don't have the money to pay it, number one. They may have their lives may be in disarray, and they may not show up for a court date, which causes more fines to be imposed. After that, uh, they may not be able to pay that fine, and then there is a jail sentence involved, and then now they find themselves incarcerated. It's a downward spiral that happens with traffic violations, and it would happen with the same sort. You know, if you're if you're doing this to people who are buying and selling marijuana, you're doing the same thing as you would be for a, tra a minor traffic violation. And then balloon into something really difficult for poor people. Um, you know, that sort of disruption uh, to people's lives uh, and families is the sort of thing that the legislature is trying to prevent for poor people. They're trying to make it so that it removes some of that so that the stresses that cause people to end up with much bigger problems, you know, they can't handle all this happening, so now they're going to try a pill of some sort. Um, that's what, that's the goal of this, is to, is to take some of the low-level stressors off of these sort of things where we're incarcerating people or keeping fines on their heads for benign, relatively benign stuff um, and so that we can help reduce the stressors in the community that are causing greater problems that we need to be addressing and treating. So that's, that's why the legislature is doing this. Why they'll want to legalize it is because is to remove that stressor. Just how you quickly respond and then we'll okay. move on. Again, if your neighbors are currently selling marijuana, they are breaking not only state but federal law. Right, we know that. If but they're I mean, doing you know that after July 1st, they're going person. to continue to be breaking state and federal law. Right. So as a community member, I would ask you if you know there's illegal activity going on in your neighborhood, that you would report that to us <laughs> just, so that we can I, deal I with don't it. know of any illegal activity whatsoever, and I'm not speaking of my personal neighbors on Green Place. Okay. All right. <laughs> However, I All wasn't right. born I think, yesterday. <laughs> All right. I think um, I'm real brief, and then we're going to move on. I'll go to Colleen first, because I've let you uh, go to Colleen, and then... Uh, I just, the, the residence question I found troublesome. Um, I find it, I feel like this issue requires more discussion mm -hmm. and understanding from the citizenry. Um, but that, that where do you live question troubled me, right? Because we had a, a very dedicated resident from Derby who wrote an ordinance for us. So, if we don't have to live in a place to be a concerned citizen, right? Do you see what I'm saying? And thank you for writing the ordinance, Seth. Okay, um, let me go to someone who hasn't just asked the question first. Uh, James Merriam, then we'll go to Mrs. Johnson, and we'll go to Joe. Thank you. Give people who haven't had a chance. Two things. Uh, first off, people who use relatively benign intoxicants is not them, it's us. Uh, it's just when one of them happens to have been regulated for whatever uh, perverse reason for a long time, I think we should be ahead, not behind. And I think there's no question that this is turning behind. Um, uh, one of the main reasons that we have, uh, so I'm a resident of Newport and I'm also the pastor of the United Church. And I don't speak for the United Church, but I do speak for the broader denomination, the United Church of Christ, which stands against uh, 
uh, harmful uh, community damaging drug enforcement across the board. And we are paid and we are kept here partially to have long memories. Um, and we got uh, uh, roped up in some bad, bad stuff with uh, prohibition. And a lot of xenophobia, a lot of uh, classism, ageism, sexism that got uh, really out of hand and then we uh, didn't, didn't realize that we weren't standing on moral high ground anymore for a long time. It's, it's kind of ironic. It may have been 100 years ago today that my predecessor might have stood here in, this, uh, in front of the same body to support federal prohibition. Um, but now I'm here knowing that we have a long memory and this, is, uh, this kind of thing doesn't work. It doesn't work on a local level. It doesn't work on a broader level. And I'm lost as to what, the, uh, what is trying to be achieved. And I'm also, I deal with uh, the various both pre and post effects of the drug community in Newport all the time. And I would have liked to have been involved in this as well. Um, but my perspective is very different than those that have been shared. And I, it confuses me that some could come, um, some who are right on the ground would come to have such a different perspective, but that we we have there is not a unit there's not a unified opinion by any means. Um, we have a camp in Derby and four or five years ago the neighbors came over and they wanted us, all of us to go to the Derby Council or the Derby Select Board to go against the, all this noise that's going on. So the place is full and I can't, I can't remember for James this book or I think a regular we said, well, then you don't need to, I said, but, but, but we're paying taxes on two places. That's it. And that happens everywhere. It happens in North Troy. So this is nothing. They just ask because you're going to be a voter. Uh, we were shocked because, but I, that's what they said. If you're from that, you know, set yourself in commentary and you want it to go and disagree for a single say, is where are you from? It doesn't matter, frankly, if you're paying taxes in Italy. I was surprised. I just want to get something clear in my own mind, Mr. Mayor, and that is um, precisely what the intent of this ordinance is. Um, it seems to me, at, at present, as, as the Chief has said, um, selling marijuana is illegal under both state and federal statute. Um, my expectation is if it were made legal to sell marijuana, the point of it from the state's point of view would be to get tax revenue, which means that it would be regulated along the lines of liquor stores, which in the case of those, you have the right to, um, I mean, Newport could, if it chose, not have any bars or <coughs> liquor stores in it because you're the, the liquor control agency. So I guess what I'm wondering is the main purpose of this ordinance to, conve it, to convey the city's um, opinion that it would be a mistake for the legislature to act to legalize uh, the sale of marijuana, or is it, or do you actually contemplate it being enforced at some time in the future? The purpose of the ordinance is to ban the sale or dispensing of marijuana, a federally illicit substance. That's the point of the ordinance. And you had a second follow-up question, but I, I'm sorry, Joe, I didn't. Track it, the it really had to do with whether, I mean, if, if, if it is intent is just as it's written, then I guess my follow-up question doesn't matter, which was whether the actual intent was to convey a message to the legislature. Just a little history as far as back to the medical marijuana and the bylaw. At that time, the council at this table, it was different people, um, felt that okay, medical marijuana was legalized, and it should be dispensed through a pharmacy. Because it was still illegal in the eyes of the federal <coughs> government. So they felt that it's fine if you want to, a state want, wants to legalize and have medical marijuana, it should be through a, through a pharmacy, not just through dispensaries on Main Street. or That's why they, 
that was the gist behind that bylaw at the time. And the state statute, as you said, allowed to create a bylaw. But the council strongly felt that if you want to um, have medical marijuana, it should be through a pharmacy. Like any other, like any other uh, prescription type drug. And then one more, and then we'll call the vote. Uh, so again, thank you for letting me address the council. I just want to again um, say that by voting yes on this legislation, I truly believe that the city is going to be leaving a lot of money on the table. And as the Northeast Kingdom in general, who is hard pressed to bring business up here, Newport City, who is hard pressed to bring business up here, and all the amount of resources that we've all put in and all the time that we've put in to make this city flourish, it seems once again very foolish to preemptively ban a substance that will soon be legal from sale. And rather, I think the best way forward would be to come back to this and potentially address how we can allow this to flourish safely in this city while also helping to benefit the city. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Um, in section three, enforcement, second paragraph, uh, second sentence, I'm a little concerned where it says, for purposes of enforcement in the Judicial Bureau, the city manager, mayor, city council member, a law enforcement officer, or a duly authorized designee of the city council shall be the designated enforcement officer. I don't wish to be an enforcement well, officer, and I'm not, why I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, so we can definitely change the draft to say law enforcement officer only, or we can. I know Health the city officer and law enforcement officer, or whatever. I know if you read the city charter, part of the mayoral duties is ordinance enforcement. Right, but and I don't even where we were going with it, but it doesn't. Right. But that's in the I charter. Understand. That's part of the mayor's duty. But I, or if we I leave that up to the experts to right. enforce it. I don't enforce the ordinances, yeah, yeah, yeah. even though it's in the charter from 100 years ago. <laughs> I don't have time to enforce ordinances as far as that aspect. So that's I know, but that's why I, I figured that's why that part was in there. Yeah, it was. It, by no means would you be, for lack of a better term, forced into doing so. Can uh, we strike that? Yeah, I, it, makes, I, it makes no difference to me one way or the other. So. Just to that. And to address Mr. Rogers' concern, uh, this would be an ordinance. And an ordinance can be changed at any time. So in a few weeks, if things change, the ordinance could be changed. But of course, this would not be enacted first. 60 days. Um, but yeah, if, if, if the state or the federal government changes their rules, we have the right to change the ordinance or even strike it. So to say that, you know, we're going to have this and it's going to remain on the books, no, it can be changed or it can be struck, struck out of the books. Oh, that's the original. So do I, can I make an amendment to my own draft or because it's already been voted on, I don't know how to. Well, we can amend it. Okay. I guess I would, I would request that the city. It hasn't been a vote. It hasn't been a vote on it. Okay. But we could entertain it. You know, there's, there's a vote on the You can floor. change anything you want. It hasn't been voted on. Okay. Right. So I guess. Vote, the, the motion was to accept it as written, but then we can always amend it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to request that we strike the language, uh, section three enforcement, second paragraph take out the city manager, mayor, or city council member, and leave it just as law enforcement officer or a duly authorized designee of the city council, should we choose to have a constable again someday, or a health officer, et cetera, et cetera. So I take those one, two, three out, and have it just read, uh, and I don't know if I have to do this on the official draft, but violations enforced shall be in accordance with provisions 24 BSA, section 1974 and 1977, for purposes of enforcement in the Judicial Bureau, a law enforcement officer or duly authorized designee of the City Council. Just to clarify a few points, this in no way deals with CBD or other derivatives of the hemp plant. Uh, it's very clear in the statute quoted uh, what marijuana is. And and the hemp byproducts are exempted. 
as far as uh, the Vermont statute are prohibiting the sale of marijuana and the illegal usage, incredibly well crafted, used it many times throughout my career. I believe it was 4230 subsection A, title 18. With the stroke of a pen, legislature made that go away. So this is us just saying the commercial sale of marijuana. We're not making a statement about we want to prohibit legalization, we want to ban it. We're just saying we want to be able to control what's happening within the city. And again, I urge people, if you haven't, there is a bill, H-490, which thank God did not pass. Uh, it's rather verbose, but if you read that, you will see why it is incumbent upon towns to address these issues before a legislature does. Uh, had that passed, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be sitting here tonight because it wouldn't matter. Okay, we have a motion and a second. The chief did amend the um, section three. Any other discussion? We would have to pull a second and pull the original motion. You can vote to accept, you can actually vote. You can have a motion to accept his amendment. We vote on that and then we vote on the original. Okay. It's a two-step, but it's really the way, that technically it's the way we should do it, is you vote to accept his amendment, because you might not want to accept the amendment. See what I'm getting at? So you want to have a motion to accept the amendment. But also if you were to withdraw the second and withdraw I mean, we, the original, then you could always make your motion to accept it as a change is made. You could do that too, I so, guess. So I guess we'll hand that doesn't All right, does someone care to withdraw the second? Who made the motion in the second way back? I made the motion. You want to withdraw the second? I withdraw the second and I'll withdraw the okay. motion. Now, and do we have a motion? I will make a new motion to accept ordinance number 118, prohibiting the sale and distribution of marijuana within the city of Innes of Newport with the changes made by Chief DeSanto. A motion's been made. Is there a second? I will second. And seconded. Any more discussion? Then hearing, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to abstain. And I'd like it noted in the minutes that I am not in disagreement with the ordinance. I am opposed to the very quick rollout and the lack of public input opportunity. Is that a no? Yes, it is, right? But yes, it's not. Is that a VLC2 training? We've discussed it at this table. Okay, so we. Did you vote aye? Did you vote aye? I didn't. Okay, so it's three to three ayes, one abstention. Motion passes. Motion passes. You want to have a new type one before we all sign it? I will sign. Uh, I can sign the draft. Any copies of it? Actually, we could sign this because it has it here. You just have to do the yeah. first page. Yeah. Uh, okay.
это делал звук амбатора. Centennial, because the next time we have a meeting will be after the centennial. So, with that, the next regular council meeting will be Monday, July 9th, 6 30 p.m. And then the, the next centennial planning committee meeting will be June 21st, 5 p.m. here. Now we need a motion to adjourn at 1955. So, moved, motion made. Is there a second? Seconded. Discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, we are adjourned.